Back when I was a young teenager, my parents were looking for a new vehicle. Well, a used vehicle, but new to us. We went one weekend to start looking and test driving some. I love doing these things like this, or going to look at RVs with my dad at RV shows, even though I knew we couldn't afford one. I was that kid that just genuinely enjoyed spending time with my parents. It was a Saturday around noon. We headed out to a few of the lots that advertised affordable pricing and certified used vehicles. My parents were ultimately most interested in a Cadillac or an SUV. They hadn't made up their mind and had anything set in stone. We first got out and browsed at two similar lots, but didn't find much of interest. So we hit up the budget lot my dad had had the most luck with in the past. We got out and he immediately headed towards a dark blue Cadillac with silver trim and handles. I knew as soon as we saw it, he was going to want to check it out. I don't like it, I said. What do you mean you don't like it? We haven't even seen the inside yet, said Dad. It's creepy, I said, walking over to the Chevy Trailblazer next to it. Why can't we just test drive this instead, I asked. But the salesman came outside and Dad asked him to grab the keys for the Cadillac. Soon, the salesman was placing the dealer plates on, grabbing my dad's license to make a copy of it, and handing him the keys. Enjoy, it rides beautifully, the guy said with a smile. We were less than five minutes down the road when I said out loud, I hate this car, it doesn't feel right. It's a nice car, Amanda, dad said. Yeah, I don't know what you feel. It seems fine to me, Mom said. I don't know. I can't explain it. It just feels off, I said completely seriously. I think you have an overactive imagination, said Dad, chuckling. What did you think? The overzealous salesman asked. I think we can strike a deal, Dad responded. Oh great, I get to ride in that creepy thing every day, I thought. After about an hour of paperwork and other boring business, we were taking off, with Mom driving the new car, and my dad and I in the car we bought we brought with. Because I wasn't about to volunteer to ride home in that thing. I was seriously not feeling it. How did it ride? Dad asked when we pulled up at home. Smooth, except once the radio cut out on me. Don't know what happened there, Mom responded. It was clearly a sign you shouldn't have bought it, I said. Oh, drop it already, Dad said, laughing. The next day, we had to go grocery shopping, and I protested going in the new car. Can't we just take the other one? I asked. No, we're taking the new one. Your dad's taking the other car over to John's to get looked at, she said. As soon as we got in the car, I felt it again. This bad energy. I still can't describe it to this day, other than bad. It felt like something very bad happened in that car. We were picking my sister up from her friend's house before heading to the grocery store. And when she got in, she said... Oh, is this the new car? It's weird. See, I told you, Mom, I said. On the way to the grocery store, the radio suddenly turned on, scaring all of us. It took about an hour in the grocery store, and back then we sometimes took advantage of the drive-up service, where you were given a number written in marker on your receipt. And all you had to do was drive up, show the number, and someone would bring it out and load your groceries for you. Kind of like today's grocery pickup, but you had to do all the legwork in the store. Right as we pulled up to show our number, the horn honked. Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Why'd you honk? I asked, since there was a guy clearly standing right there waiting for us. I didn't touch the horn, it must be a short, Mom said. The rest of the day passed without incident. Once the groceries were loaded, we headed home. A few days later, Mom walked in the door from work 
clearly frazzled, and slammed her purse onto the top of the chest freezer where she always set it when she came in. What's wrong? Dad asked, dinner cooking on the stove. The brakes are acting funny on the car. I nearly got killed, Mom said. What were they doing? asked Dad. I pressed on the pedal and it felt like normal, only the car didn't stop, she said, clearly shaken up. I almost rear-ended someone at a red light, she added. I'll take it for a spin after dinner and see what's up, said Dad. But after dinner, Dad took the car out for a good half an hour or so, and nothing went wrong. He traded cars with my mom the following day, just in case, and nothing happened at all any of the times he drove it the next day, either. The following morning, Mom drove my sister and I to school, so we didn't have to get up early and wait at the bus stop in the cold. About halfway to town, the car started veering towards the side of the road. So I asked, Mom, is everything okay? Why are you pulling over? I'm not trying to pull over. The car is pulling itself that way, she said, trying not to sound too panicked because she knew it would set off my anxiety. We're fine. I'll just pull off the road for a second and let these car pa cars pass, she said. We made it to school just fine, but I could see stress on my mom's face. I could go on, because that car caused numerous other issues for the next following couple of weeks. None of them ever explainable. Until finally, they decided they weren't willing to keep it, brought it back, and traded it for a different car from the same lot. My dad just says the car had too many mechanical issues. I know it was haunted. I felt the bad energy, and I was in it for many of the things that went wrong. They weren't things that happened consistently or in a pattern, so there were no shorts in the wiring. There weren't tons of mechanical issues. That thing was straight up haunted. And if you're listening to this, Mom, you know it was, too. I know you know. Thanks for sitting through another one of my own true paranormal stories. I know it didn't have a ton of suspense and whatnot, but it was really real and really scary at the time. If you have a paranormal story to share, email it to the address in the description below. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. And with that, drive safe and see you tomorrow, friends.